in the book of Genesis chapter 47. I'm going to start at verse 14. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money felleth. I'm going to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to Koloyim la Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rachakodesh Pukatam. I want to say the honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa, thought they're listening and learning. Lord, willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad and the land of the other nations, appearing like the other nations, who subscribe to the truth. To you, I say Shalom. The brother Yahweh Sapp out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant. I'm coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Basham Shai. Basically, um, I came across this article. I meant to go into it, but you know, I was trying to see how the spirit was gonna do it. If a brother was gonna, you know, how brothers come together, have articles, and how it's gonna do, how how the spirit was gonna have it move. But um, through the spirit, I'm just bring this out because this is the topic right now, you know what I mean? The money fell in, you know, because of the situation with um, the BRICS, you know, those different nations that, um, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, you know, these collaboration or conglomerate of nations basically coming together um, and to get out of the American dollar, to de-dollarize the, the 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 money and when i went into that word fella for genesis 47 to 15 i guess that's mm -hmm. a hebrew word and it says afos afos and it says to disappear that is cease be clean gone at an end brought to not fail <laughs> so the money fell off so it's basically gonna disappear it's gonna cease to be to the end the money going in you know because they want to basically bring in a new way of um buying and selling and that's where you got your revelation chapter 13 you know um 16 on down you know all both small and great rich and poor free or bond must receive that karagma so um i looked up the term or the definition for the word de-dollarization and it reads de-dollarization meaning de-dollarization describes a process of moving away from the world's reliance on the u.s dollar usd as the chief reserve currency because we all know um or you should be aware that you know the, the american dollar or the united states greenback is considered the petrodollar you know in order to um buy oil you have to um basically convert your money into u.s dollars and that's why babylon the great basically has had a stranglehold on the on on the on the earth you know um through the sanctions you know that they place on um different countries i was listening to um this um economist and he was going into how like the swift um that that whole swift system basically is a, a means for them to actually place them sanctions they can basically manipulate another um nation's money i wasn't aware of that you know so it says the dollar has remained the primary reserve currency and conduit for international business ever since the United States emerged as the world's top economic power following World War II. But we're seeing um, that all basically um, change because of the fact that, you know, um, the American dollar was used as a weapon. You know, it was used as a weapon um, against these other countries and it ultimately is going to be used as a weapon because because it's the world reserves currency, um, you know, and these other countries know that they're trying to get out of the dollar. That's where they created another system, you know, because, um, you know, when you go into if you've been actually following along, if you've been really diligent and watching, you'll know that China's actually um, taking a beating financially. So because all these different nations trade with one another 
And then they're all, in, to a degree, in cahoots. They're against each other, but they're in cahoots, too, because the new system that they're putting in place is going to be a digital system. All these different nations basically are creating a CBDC, you know. And that's what, I guess, America's banking on before the dollar crashes, you know, or when the dollar crashes, I guess, to switch over to that system. I mean, who's to say exactly how it's going to go? But we can clearly see that the dollar is is pretty much dead. And I had an article going into that, you know, and this is a major step right here based on this. You know, the article reads and read the headline. It says this six days ago. See, I didn't even know I had the article that much that long. It's been that much going on. India just ditched the dollar and used its own currency to buy a million barrels of oil from the UAE. So that's the United Arab Emirates. India bought. 1 million barrels of oil from the United Arab Emirates, Emirates using its own currency instead of U.S. dollars. The Indian Oil Corp settled a payment in rupees with the uh, uh, du, du, du Abai National Oil Company. Nations including India, Russia, and other BRICS members have been punished. Salaki and other BRICS members have been, been pushing to de-dollarize. And um, if you remember, what was that, a couple months back or you know, maybe six weeks back. Can't remember exactly when, but uh, you had that um, hamatic um, um, leader, that nation. Uh, I forgot what. I think it was Ghana or one of those hamatic countries. But basically, he was telling his citizens, if you hold American dollars, to basically get rid of them. So something's about to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, it ain't happened today. You know, you got the BRICS meeting right now, pushing um, de-dollarization. But you got... Basically, once they unveiled their currency, like 40 nations wanted to join onto BRICS. And, you know, that's like half of the, you know what I mean? I think they say that's, that's like 40% of the of the, the nations of the world, you know what I mean? And best believe that there's going to be more because this, again, this this dollar was used as a, a weapon, you know? It was backed by nothing besides the um, United States government's military. And now you got a, 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 a currency that's going to be backed by gold, you know? So, um, I don't even know if I'm really reading any of this, um, but you know, at the end of the day, we're seeing, um, history being made, you know? Um, so, you know, matter of fact, I get James cause James talks about the James, the book of James, um, chapter five. And I'm starting verse one and it reads, go to now ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Let's go into that word miseries. So walk you. Miseries. Strong's G 5004. Talipuria. Talipuria. It says hardships, troubles, calamity, misery. It says, um, your, your troubles or your hardship shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. The money, this money system, which is built on miry clay debt, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, um, it's basically crumbling. So it's corrupted. It says your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Because it tells you in Ezekiel that they should throw their silver and the gold in the streets because they ain't going to be worth shit. You know, the American dollar is going to be like um, in Germany, the Weinen, Weinen Republic, when, when basically the money wasn't worth anything, you know, and you could, you know, wait to this fight. Like when these other nations join on to this brick, you're going to see like people complain about inflation. You know, I just came across the um, TikTok videos that are actually being uploaded to YouTube where they're compilations. And at first I had one I put in a group chat. Now I've seen like about, the, about six of them. Like these people taking a beating. You know what I mean? Like call Loyim La Yahba Shim Yahba Shah. And the Lord Yahba Shim Yahba Shah has been staining brothers. Brothers been catching their hell, but brothers been catching hell. You know what I'm saying? And then the thing is, the what brothers got, they got the brothers. You get what I'm saying? You know, you know, like I watch brothers come together and look out for one another constantly. You know what I mean? And that's what the one of the beautiful things about having this brotherhood. You know, um, that's pretty much, you know, so, um, uh, it makes me think of Second Timothy chapter three because it talks about in the last days perilous times shall come upon you. Um, roughly paraphrased, when you go into that word perilous, it means hard to do. So it's gonna be hard to do, meaning hard to live, hard to survive, hard to eat. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So, you know what I mean? We about to come into some rough times, you know what I mean? And this is the time that you're going to need to be fully invested in your how about you know You know, I was just thinking about how, um, because, you know, the Lord got the spirit on the elders to go into health for whatever reason, you know. And the crazy part is my health is not the best. So it was spiritual how to help the elder. They, they've been on his health kick. But um, saying all that to say this, you know, you're going into fast and the intermediate fast and, the, and all these different ways of fasting. And, you know, it, I just made me think about like how, you know, even with that, you know, like the less food you eat is better for your body than it is the more that you consume, you know what I mean? And, you know, that, you know, that's like basically being, a, being in the spirit as opposed to being in the flesh, you know, how much more your body, you know, is, 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 is in, it will be healthier if you basically ate less. So, you know, um, I'm gonna read a little bit of the article. I ain't trying to do this all day though, cause, uh, I'm on my lunch break. It says Indian Oil Corp ditched the greenback and used rupees to purchase one million barrels of oil from Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, the Indian Embassy in the UAE, said Monday, according to Rutgers report. And that sounds like an ultimate slap in the face. So whatever the fuck about to happen is won't happen this soon. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, it's you know, you got these economists that say about six months from now. But I can see this happening way before then. If you got a, company, a country like... Um, India that just did that. How many other countries gonna do it? What happens when Russia do it? What happens when China do it? You know what I mean? Now the thing is, China again, um, because I forgot the name of that that real estate company, that major real estate company that's basically uh like um uh, basically crashing over in China. But from what I hear, um that company owns property in America. You know, because again, America, you know, has the petrodollar. So all these different nations are invested with this. You know, the thing is, the way that they're trying to get up out of it is basically creating a, a separate currency. Since most commodity, so like in most commodity deals worldwide are typically settled in dollars, but India, the world's third biggest oil importer and consumer, signed a contract last month with the UAE opening doors to use rupees instead of dollars. And if they did that, that means it's over with. That means the dollar did. Um which would minimize costs by taking out dollar conversions from transactions. The two also agreed to implement a real-time payment mechanism to simplify cross-border transactions. Monday's deal marked India's first crude oil payment to the UAE in rupees. It's followed the recent purchase of a 25-kilogram gold by a buyer in India from a, from a UAE exporter using rupees. So, you know, that's pretty much it. It says de-dollarization has gained steam since the U.S. imposed financial sanctions on Russia last year. And countries from China and India to France and Israel have all signaled interest. And the funny part is, you know, I can't think of that scripture right now. But, you know, basically how, you know, uh, France and Israel are supposed to be allies of America, right? <laughs> but they basically turned their back because they see this bitch die. Call lawyer, blah, 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 You know, and the most, the, the, you know. I was listening to a brother because uh, I, I was listening to a few videos brothers going in on about the de-dollarization and one brother, I forgot where he's from, I think Birmingham, Alabama, he was going into how, um, you know, our people worship money, you know what I mean? You know, they idolize money. And that's one of the ways of going to be Jacob's trouble as well. You know, you know, a lot of our people think money is going to be a savior, you know what I mean? And scripture does talk about how um, money is a defense and money answers all things. But it also says riches profit not in the day of wrath. You know, what it says is um, wisdom and knowledge to be the stability of thy times. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. You know what I mean? And what's the wisdom and knowledge? This truth. You know what I mean? You know, like I said, the scriptures talk about um, entering in at the straight gate. You know what I mean? Scriptures talk about how you're going to be like pilgrims on the earth. A pilgrim basically doesn't have any possessions. So you're going to have to give up everything for Yahweh Shah Mashiach to gain this truth. Maybe you have to give up your family, but you definitely gonna have to give up your possessions unless it's the will of the Lord that he sees fit that you need that to, you know, for your journey. You know what I mean? For the most part, you're going to give up everything. Just like your Howard Shah did. Uh, what did I want? So, you know, 
a lot of um these merchants gonna be sick with it when you go into the book of um revelation chapter 18 it says um this revelation chapter 18 i'm gonna start at verse 7 how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i said a sit of a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her place come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burnt with fire for strong is the lord's power who judgeth her and that's spiritual because um brothers is going into how many fires is going on you know what i mean you know um fires in california you have fires in canada you you had this situation that just happened in hawaii which you know is owned by america to a degree so you know what's that scripture in luke um um, he can't bring fire on the earth and what if it be if it be not kindled roughly play your phrase it's lucky for butchering it um it says therefore shall her place come one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burnt with fire for strong as the lord yahweh power who judge of her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived delicious with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning because a lot of these nations did make money with it, you know america babylon the great but that's why you got these nations cutting ties with her now based on what this bricks you know this whole bricks situation doing like i said again from what i um you know i was watching redacted and these different you know keepers of the house and basically they saying like it's like 40 nations basically ready to join and it's going to be more before the week out <laughs> and they just did this today well on the 22nd tuesday today's now wednesday it says, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. That's going into the, the, the ICBMs. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk, scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of fury and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and brass and iron and marble. But basically, you know, all the different merchandise and America don't really make anything anymore. You know what I mean? Except for uh, 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 trouble for the, the world. You know what I mean? Like uh, all the majority of the manufacturers basically moved their companies to other countries. You know what I mean? I remember being in um, high school when they were talking about NAFTA. And I remember back then people were saying that basically that was going to fuck up the jobs. And what did it do? For the most part, it fucked up the jobs. You know, they can go to a, another country where they could pay for cheaper labor costs. Uh, I read that. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 47. I'm going to start at verse 7 and it reads, Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more intimate? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Because at the end of the day, this system that this devil set up, like I said, is, you know, it's looking like it's failing, you know what I mean? That's why, um, again, I mean, ultimately, it's the will of Yahweh Bashim al -Shah. Again, you know, the scriptures talk about the deceived and deceiver are both his. You know, again, this is going to affect a lot of, you know, these people that's um, spiritually discerned. But, you know what I mean? For the most part, you know, it's going to affect those the most that literally, like, love this place, you know? That's going to be the most hurt, you know, brothers in the truth. You know, we looking forward to this day because we know certain things must take place before our big brother, our Lord and Savior, Yahusha Mashiach, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, comes back. You know, and we know we're going to suffer and go through things. But at the same time, we pray that the Lord put the spirit on us to endure that suffering. You know, flee, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him. You know, and he visiting him now. You know what I mean? See, again, like I said, this thing gonna come as a thief in the night. You know what I mean? It's real quiet. I looked at the stock market. You know, it dropped a, like a hundred points, but nothing major. When nobody panicked. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, who's to say what it's gonna do next? But you know what I'm saying? And the spiritual that they talk about lockdowns and mass mass restrictions and all. And it makes sense for them to have to do that if the dollar dies. You know, and you know, scriptures talk about um. Surely um, he will reveal of his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So, you know, um, it tells you in Second Corinthians, least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So Esau may bear to us. We know his plague because the, the plagues that he about to try to utilize because 
we acknowledge and read the scriptures. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If these by night, they will destroy till they have enough. And this greedy, covetous fucking devil, you know what I mean? It talks about how covetous he is in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. But I have made Esau bear, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, his brother and his neighbors, and he is not. And this whole the, the whole world is looking at this devil. That's why you got these different nations um that are angry. You know, Revelation chapter 18 said the or I think that's Revelation chapter eleven, talks about the nations were angry. You know, that's why you got what's going on in the in, in the lamb and ham, talking about uh going after the farmer, you know. I forgot, uh, I was watching a video from the brother Micah Allah from Ancient of the Days, and he, I forgot what country that was, but they was talking about fuck this devil. Like, uh, the world is mad at this devil. They ready to get, you know, mm -hmm. they ready to fuck this devil up. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. I'm going to um, start at verse for that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Who's the king of Babylon? These elites, you know. You can say Joe Biden if you would like, but he's really a puppet. It's the elites behind it. You know what I mean? The elites own Babylon because Babylon is a corporation. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindered. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. You know, because the scriptures talk about when the uh, righteous in the, in, are in the, uh, when the wicked bear rule, the people, no, the scriptures talk about the, when the righteous bear rule, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And right now, like I said, if you was to find them TikTok compilations, people are in mourning. <laughs> Um, I'm going to skip to verse 9 Hail from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming It stirred up the dead for thee Even all the chief ones of the earth It hath raised up from their thrones All the kings of the nations The nations are upset at this devil All they shall speak and say unto thee Art thou also become weak as we Art thou become like unto us Because of the fact you know these other nations Now they have these ICBMs as well And then this dollar You know that dollar played a major role you know, um, with controlling, the, you know, again, it was used as a weapon. You know what I mean? It was, you couldn't make moves and then they control the sanctions. You know what I mean? You couldn't, you know, export, import, you know. Well, I ain't going to say you couldn't export, import, but, you know, that like they, they did in South America, Maduro, you know. They would throw sanctions on them, you know what I mean? So, again, you know, I mean, you know, like, 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 like um, that devil said, um, that Rothschild, he said, um, give me control of the nation's money and I care not who makes his laws. I control your money. I control your living. That's why, like I said, they want to put a system in place where literally you ain't going to be able to buy or sell if, if they allow it. They ain't really trying to be gods on the planet. Uh, so, you know, again, we sitting back and we waiting for this to happen. But at the same time, this is first Peter chapter four and verse seven. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Because at the end of the day, we know the end is near, you know, or nigh. Because we just, like I said, once these nations start all like saying, fuck the dollar, your hyperflation going to kick in. And then this bitch done. Then you're going to see these people really eat each other. You know what I mean? You're going to see how uncivilized Babylon, the great AKA America truly is. So with that, I'm going to end the lesson. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to call Allah, Yom Laya Hawa, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Racha, Kudash Bukatam. I'm going to say double honor to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do real well. I'm going to say peace and salutations to the Akim, because the forefathers of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. I want to say shalom to the Akwad. Salaki, I want to say shalom to the Akim and the Akwad, that they listen to the learning. Lord, willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad and the land of other nations appearing like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Till next time I'm able to come with another lesson, I'm going to say Shalom, Shalom. I'm going to walk like a ball. Shalom.